It was a whirlwind day talking with President Obama in my exclusive one-on-one -on -one interview in the diplomatic reception room. We talked about his budget. The 2013 proposal just unveiled Monday, all $3.8 trillion of it. It's massive. We also talked about a campaign promise that has not been fulfilled. You're getting pelted. Uh, in the media, they're showing this video over and over again of you in February 09, saying by the end of your first term, you're going to reduce the deficit by half. We're not there. Well, we're not there because this recession uh, turned out to be a lot deeper than any of us realized. The die had been cast, but a lot of us didn't understand at that point how bad it was going to get. That increases the deficit because less tax revenues coming in. And it means that more people are getting unemployment insurance. We're helping states more so they don't lay off teachers, et cetera. The, the key, though, is we're setting ourselves on a path where we can get our debt under control. The, the most important thing we can do, though, to reduce our debt is to make sure that we continue uh, growing this economy. And we've seen some recent good news about uh, unemployment numbers coming down, more jobs being created. We've got to maintain that momentum even as we make some tough choices in terms of government spending. You know that the American public is, is tired of Washington gridlock. And your budget announced on Monday, and already uh, lawmakers were saying it's dead on arrival. Well, not lawmakers, Republicans. <laughs> Let, let's and, be clear. Uh, Republican Senator John Grasso went so far as to say it was dead on arrival. How in the world is it that we're going to get anything done if guys can't get together and, and, and make things happen. Well, look, first of all, we've gotten a lot of stuff done. I mean, the unemployment rate now is 8.3 percent, and we created 250,000 jobs last month. When I came into office, we were losing 750,000 jobs. So that's a million job swing. That's getting something done. Saving the auto industry, that's getting something done. Making sure that uh, you know, we are expanding manufacturing. Uh, we actually have added more manufacturing jobs since 1990. And it appears that we may be able to get done the extension of the payroll tax cut that I've been calling for uh, and extend that all the way till the end of the year uh, with, with was, bipartisan support. That was such a fight, though, uh, and before the holidays. You're right, and it shouldn't Is have it been. Is it going to be a, a tough battle again? You know, I think that we're, uh, I think uh, maybe those who uh, were thinking about raising taxes on 160 million middle class families uh, and saw how that worked out in December for them. I think they've rethought their approach. And talk about Washington gridlock. We've learned late Tuesday that Congress will pass the payroll tax cut through the end of the year. Talk about working together on the North Lawn of the White House. I'm Amanda Davis, Fox 5 News. The most powerful name in local news, Fox 5 News at 10. The National Weather Service has now confirmed that at least 10 tornadoes touched down in Georgia Wednesday night claiming 15 lives. In Alabama, the death toll has now risen to 238, bringing the overall total in seven states to 329. President Obama was in Tuscaloosa today to see the devastation firsthand, and he said he'll make sure the victims will not be forgotten. Hundreds of houses and dozens of businesses were reduced to rubble when severe storms roared through Spalding County. The F3 tornado sadly took two lives, but tonight we're hearing incredible stories of survival. Fox 5's Caitlin Pratt joins us live with more. Caitlin? The latest here in Spalding County. I'm Caitlin Pratt, Fox 5 News. All right, I certainly think these storms made believers out of a lot of people that they need to do something to protect themselves. Thank you, Caitlin. Turning now to the weather, uh, we've had two really nice days since those tornadoes, and that's good news because so many people have a lot of work to do to rebuild. Good evening. I'm Amanda Davis. And I'm Russ Spencer. We are following breaking news for you right now in Gwinnett County. Graham Carroll is over the scene now in Sky Fox 5. Graham, this is a horrible accident. Indeed, Amanda, you can see the damage to the vehicle. Fox 5 News. All right, Graham, thank you. And now a Fox 5 exclusive. A former Atlanta police officer with 20 years on the force is speaking out about what he describes as pressure put on officers to make arrests and meet quotas. Now, Police Chief Richard Pennington has denied the existence of quotas at the APD, an issue raised after an elderly woman was killed by his officers. Veteran officer Bud Watson says he's speaking out now because he doesn't want the city to go through another tragedy like the deadly Neal Street shooting. All three victims of this plane crash belong to the same church in Woodstock. Well, today, church members gathered together to mourn their loss. Fox News' Mark Hyman joins us now. He has more on the story. Mark? Her murder inside a luxurious Midtown condo made national headlines. Now, at the three-week mark of her death, 
The man who loved cancer researcher Dr. Jean Tao is speaking to Fox 5. He sat down today with our own Chris Shaw. After a lovely weekend and a start to the work week, you can't beat it. Can't so beat everyone it. wants to know, is it here to stay? No, it's not here to stay. <laughs> Good evening, I'm Russ Spencer. And I'm Amanda Davis. Well, it's a head-to-head -head matchup, and the results will finally crown the Republican candidate for governor, this after a bruising three-week runoff campaign. And joining us now for some perspective on tonight's race and what's ahead for the general election, again, Republican strategist Rusty Paul and Jeff Dickerson with the Fox 5 Georgia Gang. Jeff, uh, we heard Roy Barnes say earlier he's going to bed. It doesn't matter to him who wins tonight. Uh, is he right? Well, you know, Roy Barnes has had an easy time for the last three weeks. And, and Jeff, uh, we hear every election that the voters do not like negative campaigns, but we've seen some negative ads in this primary runoff. Yeah, we certainly have. Good evening, I'm Russ Spencer. And I'm Amanda Davis. Parts of Metro Atlanta are drowning in floodwaters tonight. Some major highways are shut down, making it hard for people to find their way to work and back home. Several school districts are closed as water floods classrooms and sports fields. And businesses are taking a hit from floodwaters as well. Many business owners can't even get in the doors to see the damage. We begin with Fox 5's George Franco. He's live in Austell, a town practically cut in half by the high water. Cleanup from the flooding is expected to take several weeks. And Fox 5's Julia Harding is live now on Northside Drive. With more on that. Julia. President Obama held a number of meetings during U.N. General Assembly sessions today. And one of those was a first-time meeting between President Obama, Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu, and Palestinian leader Mahmoud Abbas. Prime Minister Netanyahu has refused to freeze construction in the West Bank and East Jerusalem. The Palestinians hope to build a state there with East Jerusalem as its capital. The defense in the Silver Comet trial continues to try to convince a jury that Michael Ledford's life should be spared for murdering cyclist Jennifer Ewing. Ledford was convicted Monday for the 2006 sexual assault and murder of Ewing as she biked along the Silver Comet trail. The defense had a parade of expert witnesses and family to try to explain to the jury how and why Ledford became a killer. Last week, we introduced you to Jim McNabb, a Dunwoody man with an incredible story. He went into cardiac arrest and died for nearly 20 minutes. But as Health Watch reporter Beth Galvin explains, that's where Jim McNabb's story doesn't end, right? It's just beginning. No, Amanda, that's amazing. Every new part you add to this story. Now, this is becoming uh, the norm that medical emergency, emergency medical personnel. It really is, and, and this happened coincidentally. I think we will see this go in that direction. All right, good to know. Beth, thank you. Still ahead tonight on Fox 5 News. Dakota, how's it going? Good, how about you? Dakota probably looks familiar to you. We've actually featured him a couple of times. What have you been doing since the last time we talked? Playing a bunch of sports, horseback riding, working on school, stuff like that. What are you looking for in a permanent home? It really doesn't matter. As long as if I know that somebody loves me and they really want me, that's fine. It don't matter if they have enough stuff or not. Yeah. It's not about stuff. Mm. All right. Well, Dakota, we're going to keep trying. It's good to see Dakota again. I first met him two years ago when he was 14. Dakota stepped in the ring with former middleweight boxing champion Robert Allen. Dakota told me then what it would mean to find his forever family. So would you like to be adopted? Yes, ma'am. What would that mean to you? Why do you want to be adopted? Well, mostly that means I have somebody who really cares and somebody who loves you and really wants a son. Dakota has remained hopeful these past two years. He still believes adoption is in his future. When we sat in on a photo shoot for Urban Lux magazine this summer, Dakota talked about some of the tough times. Because without a family member, it's really hard to do what you got to do. Dakota's search really touched the hearts of the folks at the Melting Pot restaurant, so they decided that Christmas would come a little early for Dakota. <laughs> wow! Amanda, Dakota, how are you? Dakota was given several fabulous gifts, some take-home chocolate fondue, several gift cards, an iPod touch, and gladiators tickets. Dakota was thrilled with his gifts and he was especially impressed when he learned the melting pot was running a promotion to help other Wednesday's child kids. Uh, we will be hosting a, uh, a dinner or lunch um, for, uh, to help support um, the children for the charity and a portion of the proceeds will go towards the charity that day. Dakota's smile is enough to uplift anyone's spirit this holiday season. Here's hoping his Christmas wish for family comes true. Wednesday's, Wednesday's child at the Melting, melting Pot Midtown. Mid <laughs>